Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the New York City Church of Christ online service. One of my favorite parts has been the opportunity to virtually connect through our online services each week. It reminds me that even though we are in self-isolation, we are not alone. And it's been amazing to come together to praise God and to hear God's word. If you're visiting with us, we'd love for you to connect more through clicking on the link in our description or going to nyccoc.net slash connect. As we start our service this morning, I want to share a thought uh, and a passage from Romans chapter 8. In verse 38, Paul writes, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, we're separated from a lot of different things right now. We're having to worship separately this morning. Uh, many of us are separate from our normal workplaces, uh, our favorite people to be around, our favorite places to go, parks, restaurants, or whatever it is. Uh, but the Bible tells us there's one thing that nothing can separate us from, and that is the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so this morning, as we sing to God, as we pray to God, as we hear the words of God and fellowship with God's other people, let's remember this is a God who loves us in an inseparable way. Let's go to Him in prayer as we start our service this morning. Father, good morning. Uh, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship you virtually this morning, God. Thank you for the technology to be able to do this. Uh, as all 10 regions of our New York City Church, uh, Church of Christ come together uh, to worship and praise the one uh, who loves us in a way that can never be separated. God, thank you so much for loving us in that way. And as we sing to you, as we pray to you, as we hear your words this morning, help us to take it to heart. Uh, and to give you our whole hearts back as the one who loves us in an inseparable way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the praises of 
glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord. to be able to bring the contribution talk for us today. So if you could, please turn over to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 19. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, treasure can be defined as something of great worth value or importance and as sons and daughters of God the things we should treasure the things that are important to us should add value to our relationship with God you know many times we buy new things and we love sharing the good news of new things we have yet to find out in just a few days weeks or months those new things become old news but when it comes to our relationship with God that lasts for an eternity and it never gets old during this pandemic, I've learned to treasure my relationship with God more than ever before. These are uncertain times, and life as we know it is changing daily. But one thing that will never change is our relationship with God. The things of this world that we cling to will, are all temporary and will be gone. But God's love and God's eternal kingdom is forever. So as we give our contribution. It's not just giving money to the church. No, we're contributing to our relationship with God. It's a contribution towards saving souls in the city. It's a contribution towards helping those that have fought the good fight to continue to stay faithful. It's a contribution towards honoring God with the many blessings he's already given us. So as we give our contribution, just think about that. You're contributing to your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time that we have together. I do pray, Father, that the funds that we give, the finances that we give, will truly be a treasure and bring glory to you. God, that we will use this to win souls. We will use this to help those that are faithful to stay faithful. God, thank you so much for the many blessings you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Saved us. Lord, your love has saved us. Precious blood has bathed us. Precious blood has bathed us. Now your message takes us. Now your message takes us. All around the world. All around the world. Can't you hear them? Hear them singing. I hear them singing. Oh, the people there rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting and singing. Oh, into our 
creation. Into all creation. Each and every nation. Each and every nation. Sending your salvation. Sending your salvation. All around the world. All around the world. Can't you hear them? Hear them singing. Them singing. Oh, the people there rejoicing with one voice they are shouting, singing hallelujah, 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 praise is heard around the world. Oh, against the demons fighting, against the demons fighting, Holy Spirit guiding, Holy Spirit guiding, family we're uniting, family we're uniting. privilege to be able to share a message with you today. We're going to be looking at Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 27 through verse 29. So if you want to turn over and over there, we'll get to that in just a moment. I want to welcome all of you that might be looking in on one of our services for the first time. It's great to have you. I hope that you're, you will see that we're a church that simply wants to go by the Bible and we want to live like Jesus. And I think that'll be obvious from the lesson today. I also want you to know that Lee and I are praying for you, and we hope that you are doing well. We are about 50 days in to, or more to social distancing, and we especially want to say thank you to all of those essential workers, healthcare providers, um, first responders, because you've made it possible for us to social distance, and we really appreciate that. You know, we are living in a time right now in which the world is changing right before our eyes. And it's a golden opportunity for us to change with the world also. I mean, there are things that we will never look at the same again. Like, I mean, hand sanitizer, just washing your hands. Or even more, toilet paper. I've been preaching for about four decades and I've never held up a roll of toilet paper, but this has new meaning today than it did weeks ago. And there are many things like that in our lives that are just going to be different. They're just going to be different than they've been before. And so we need to understand that we can be different too, that there are things that we can do to change in our lives. And I think that Colossians will help us with that. You know, my grandmother, her generation grew up in the Great Depression, and pretty much that marked her life. Everything that she did, she kept going back and talking about her time in the Great Depression. My dad, it was World War II. In WW2, he joined the Marines, and he went off to fight, and he kept talking about that the rest of his life. For me, I remember the assassination of John F. Kennedy, I remember the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. I remember a man walking on the moon. I remember uh, the social revolution in the late 60s and the early 70s. I remember all that great classic rock that came out of the 60s and how he got sucked into a vortex of disco in the 70s. And I can never understand why. But 
those times shaped me. And for many of you young people today, this will be something, this pandemic will be something that will shape your lives. You'll look back on it and all of us will have a story. We'll have a story to tell our children or our grandchildren. All of us will. COVID-19, the coronavirus, social distancing, wash your hands, don't touch your face, six feet apart, flatten the curve. These are words and phrases that will live with us forever. When someone sneezes, you might run for cover. Your grandchild sneezes, I'm talking about years from now, and you're like, you, you, you flinch, and they're like, oh, it's okay, Grandpa, it's okay. Um, and you'll be, wash your hands, don't touch your face. We're going to have stories, all kinds of stories, but here's my big question today. What's your spiritual story going to be? Coming out of this, what's your spiritual story going to be? And for all of us, we ought to have a spiritual story to tell, a good spiritual story to tell. You know, if you don't know Jesus right now, then get to know him. Read one of the Gospels, get to know him, and let that be your spiritual story. For all of us, um, how did you grow spiritually during the pandemic? We ought to have a story about that. Did we get closer to Jesus? What did we learn from the Bible? What character changes did we make? Stories about how we got closer to our spouses and closer to our children. Stories about the amazing time we had in prayer or the struggles even and how we fought through the struggles so that on the other side, we could help people that were struggling and help people that were, that did go through trauma. But these are stories that we're writing right now. What story are you going to be able to tell? You know, the government and the media right now are both saying that we're at war. We're at war with COVID-19 and we are. But the thing is, as Christians that follow Jesus, we are always at war. We never stop fighting. We're always in battle. And one of the things that I've been grateful for during this time is I've been grateful that I've been reading the book of Colossians. Because Colossians reminds me on every page, practically every paragraph, that I am in a battle. And the thing is, I didn't pick Colossians to read. It picked me. Because almost a year ago, I was working on a syllabus for an intermediate Greek class that I'm teaching right now. It's just ending. And I, in that syllabus, the professor that uh, I have to follow the syllabus because it's his syllabus, even though I'm teaching it, uh, he chose Colossians. I would not have chosen that book. I would have chosen First John. It's easier for the students. I would have chosen that. But he picked Colossians, which I feel like, no, the Holy Spirit picked Colossians for me to be able to read it right now because it's energized me so much during this time. And I feel like the Holy Spirit works that way. I don't know about you, but I feel like the Holy Spirit works in our lives even beforehand to get us to the point where we can look at particular verses to learn in times where we're going to struggle. And I'm thankful to the Holy Spirit, and I want to give him credit for doing this for me. And that's part of my story is that I'm going to learn more from Colossians during this time than I probably would have in any other time that I studied it. And I'm grateful for that. And another thing about Colossians, Colossians, Paul talks about the spiritual battle, but also in Colossians, he was practicing social distancing because he was in jail. It was forced social distancing. But still, it was social distancing. And you know what he did while he was social distancing? Oh, he just wrote Ephesians and Philippians, and Colossians, and Philemon, and help people become Christians, and was able to write about joy, all while he was social distancing in a Roman jail cell. It's amazing. But as I was reading through that and thinking about that, it really helped me to think, all right, Steve, you're going to come out of this. What are you going to have to say? What story are you going to be able to tell? So let's look at this verse here, and let's focus on this verse and really see what we can learn from the great Apostle Paul. Let's start at 27, but the, the last part of 27. He talks about the mystery to the Gentiles, and then he says, which is Christ in you? This is going to read differently than your Bible, but just follow along. Which is Christ in you, 
the hope of glory, whom we proclaim, warning or admonishing, and then I love this, that he repeats the same phrase three times, every person and teaching, every person in all wisdom, in order that we might present every person complete, mature, whole in Christ, in which also I labor struggling according to his energy, the energy that he puts in me according to his power. In other words, the energy in which Christ energizes me. That's how he's working to do this. Now, there's a few things that I want us to look at in this awesome scripture here. The first thing is just how he says, you know, this is the mystery to the Gentiles. It's Christ. Paul is battling against mystery cults at this time. And the mystery cults were basically a, a, a religious group amongst the Greeks that in order to really understand their secrets and their mysteries, you had to be a part of them for a long time. They held back the secrets and they held back the answers and they held back the mysteries. And then when you paid enough money or you were there long enough and you were truly initiated, then they'd start revealing things to you. But Paul didn't work that way. He didn't operate that way. Instead, Paul was just up front. He said, you want to know the, you want to know the secret to Christianity? It's Jesus. You want to know the secret to life? It's Jesus. You want to know the secret to joy in the midst of trials? It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer. So the first thing he does, he answers the question, who? It's not, it's not a thing that makes us happy. It's not a thing that makes us secure. It's who? It's Jesus. And that's where he starts. That's the mystery to the Gentiles. It is Christ. And then he goes from the who to the second thing. And the second thing is how. How are we going to be ready for the spiritual warfare? Well, and how are we going to put Christ into our lives. He says it's through admonishing or warning. It's through teaching. And it's also through presenting everyone mature in Christ. Three things, and I don't have time to break down all three, but I'll just say this. Teaching is so important. And the idea of hearing good preaching, the admonishing and the, the nurturing that comes from that is so important. And presenting people in Christ, having good relationships, that's so important. And so we need to think about, okay, how are we going to change? How are we going to take this opportunity and get a story out of it that we're, where we're going to do well spiritually? You got to get some good teaching and you got to get some good preaching and some good nurturing and you have to have some good people in your life, even though it might be from a distance, they ought to still be there. And let me tell you, there's a lot of good things to listen to right now. People are producing some really good lessons. And I encourage you to not just go to those lessons, but get in the Bible yourself. I've learned so much from the book of Colossians, even though I'd already done a major study on it. I came back to it, and I'm learning things now that I've never seen before. And that's the beautiful thing about the Bible, is you can read it a hundred times, and it will always be fresh. There's always something new to learn from God's Word. And so get in the Word, or, or get into some great video lessons and learn. Go to that teaching and that'll help you to become mature. Which brings me to the third point. And the third point is, is what or why. The what or the why is to become mature in Christ. And why is it what or why? Well, it describes what we need to become mature in Christ, but that also is the motivation. And you got to answer that question why. You can't leave that question alone. It's a short little word, three letters, but it's one of the most important words in life. Why? Well, that's the motivation, because we want to become like Jesus, because we want to be mature in Christ. And wouldn't it be great to come out on the other side of this pandemic saying, you know what? I have grown. I am more mature in Christ. And that motivates us to get into that teaching and to listen to the preaching and to listen and, and, and talk to people and be involved because it's going to help us to grow to be more like Jesus. You know, Brene Brown says this, talking about the crisis. She says, a crisis highlights all of our fault lines. We can pretend that we have nothing to learn, or we can take this opportunity to own the truth 
and make a better future for ourselves and for others. And I love that. We can take this opportunity to make a better future for ourselves and for other people, but we have to own that. And sometimes we feel stuck or paralyzed. And what do we do about that? When I, I, you know, what happens when you sit on your leg too long and you, you know, put it to sleep a little bit and then you try to get up? Well, your leg's frozen and you got these pins and needles. It's horrible, right? Pins and needles, needles shooting up and down your leg. And what do you do? Well, you just have to, you have to move it. That's, that's the only choice you have. You have to rub it out. You have to stretch it out. You have to move it. You have to stand on it. You have to walk on it. And simply by moving, it will become unstuck. And some of us might feel stuck right now. I get that, that you might feel that way, okay? And if you do, start moving. Start moving to the Word. Start moving to prayer. Start moving to a good conversation with someone. Start moving and find that there's this opportunity ahead of you. In the Shawshank Redemption, there's this wonderful quote, if we're not living, then we're dying. We need to live right now. And we need to see that let's, ch let's change and take an opportunity to change right now. The fourth thing is, he goes back to who again? He starts with who? Jesus. And he closes out with who? Jesus. He says, I'm working here. I'm working to help you mature, but you know what? I'm doing it with his energy. And that's, that's literally what he says. I'm doing it with his energy and it's powerful. He uses that word powerful. And I appreciate that about Paul is that he was working and he was working hard to help people, but he wasn't doing it on his own. He was doing it with the energy of Christ, which shows me that that's what I need to do also. It's about Jesus. To become like Jesus, we need the help of Jesus. But the big lesson for today is, let's become more like Christ during this time so that we'll have a story about our spiritual growth from this. We're all different. We have different personalities, different jobs, different roles. But one thing we do have in common, we are spiritual beings. We've been made by God, and we will find rest and peace only in Jesus. So we're going to grow, then we have to grow in Jesus. So whatever you're doing right now, do it with Jesus. If you're a doctor or a nurse, then show the love of Jesus to your patients. If you're a bus driver, share the love of Jesus with everyone. If you're a parent at home with small children, bless your children with the presence of Jesus in your house. If you are practicing social distancing, find some time just to learn to become more like Jesus. You know, shine some light in the world around you. I've been walking in my neighborhood, practicing social distancing while I do it, and I started noticing there were these little painted rocks. And I want to show you a few of them because they've really encouraged me. Somebody took the time just to paint some slogans on rocks, and it's really helped me and brightened my day as I've walked around the neighborhood seeing these and just she, he or she put them at the trunk of a tree. They might be from a child. They might be from an adult, but someone with a childlike heart, for sure. So some of the ones that I've seen is love more, worry less. That's awesome. I love that. Another one says, look for the helpers. Now, that's a little scary. That sounds like a Stephen King story to me, but nevertheless. The next one says, be the light. Yes, be the light. Keep the faith. Yes, let's do that. This too shall pass. Slow and steady. That's what wins the race, right? Slow and steady. And then the next one. You got a friend in me. Boom, boom, boom. You got a friend in me. Oh, Randy Newman's going to sue whoever did this. Not me. Whoever did this for um, copyright infringement there. But I love that with the clouds. And it's so beautiful. Another one, my personal favorite, open a book. I take that as a direct command and I open a book every day just because that rock tells me to. A couple more, be brave. And then the last one is love the world. These rocks lift my spirit and it's just somebody adding light to the world. Someday I, I hope to be able to meet this person and just to say thanks. 
And if we're allowed to shake hands by that point, to shake their hand and say, you lifted my spirit during a dark time. And that's what we all ought to be doing. Let's ask ourselves, what can we do today, this week, this month, to brighten the lives of other people? And that way we'll become more like Jesus. My encouragement for you today is focus on Jesus. Strive to think like Jesus. Strive to act like Jesus. Take on the attitude of Christ. Be like Christ. And perhaps even after this service is ended, you could spend a little time just reflecting on how you want to be more like Jesus in the days ahead. We're going to take the communion right now. This bread represents the body of Christ, this fruit of the vine. It represents his blood. So let's pray, and then we'll have some time just focusing and reflecting on Christ. Dear God and Father, we thank you for this bread and for this fruit of the vine, and we thank you for the body and the blood of Christ. We thank you for his willingness to die on the cross for our sins. Help us every single day to live like him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you for joining our online church service today. We would really like to connect with you. So please go to nyccoc.net slash connect. You can also follow us on social media and make sure to hit the subscribe button below. We are part of an international fellowship of churches and today is our global communications day. Hey family, I'm Zach Fazio with the Kidogo YouTube channel. May 3rd is Global Communications Day for the International Churches of Christ. We want disciples to know where they can go online to find information and resources for our churches. So please, share this video with your church to help your members stay informed. First, there's disciplestoday.org, the official website for the ICOC. Disciples Today is a portal to find all kinds of resources made for disciples. For example, click the resources section to find downloadable podcasts, Bible talks, Christian professional workshops, and an app that contains all of our Bible study series. There's also hundreds of inspiring articles about churches, conferences, and service projects. The fastest way to stay informed is to sign up for their free monthly newsletter. Disciples Today is also home to the ICOC Church Locator, where you can find contact information on hundreds of ICOC churches worldwide. There's also DT Heart and Soul, a matchmaking platform like eHarmony that hosts men and women from our family of churches. Finally, Disciples Today wants to hear from you. Please fill out their survey so they can know what your communication needs are in all the different parts of the world. Next, there's the Kidogo YouTube channel. That's us. We make Christian videos. Find our channel by searching for Kidogo, K-E-Y-D-O-G-O. The videos feature inspiring stories, testimonies, and updates about upcoming events. We also have a series of videos that explain biblical doctrines and controversial issues. We also just uploaded our feature-length movie, Finding Guy. It's a documentary about a gay man who found Jesus and then started a worldwide movement to bridge the gap between the LGBT community and the church. The movie has received standing ovations from people all around the world. You can watch all three parts of the movie right here on YouTube. And please click the subscribe button so you can be notified when we make new videos. We're getting closer and closer to reaching 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for taking a moment to let us talk about global communication. We praise God for how he continues to bless our family of churches and keep us unified. God bless. We'll also welcome all those who became Christians this past week. Thank you again for joining us today. Please connect with us online and we'll see you right back here next Sunday.